Hello everyone, myself Amrind Kumar Ajit, Assistant Professor of Law from National Law University, Odisha. I am going to discuss John Mitchell Fennes, a natural law philosopher. The prerequisites for this sub-module is basic concept of natural law and objective of this module is first to provide modern interpretation of natural law theory. Students will know about Finnish approach to interpret natural law and know the relationship between natural law and positivist theory. Keywords are moral law, basic goods, practical reasonableness. John Mitchell is a prominent living legal philosopher who is presently a professor of jurisprudence at Oxford. He has successfully managed to revive the discussion on natural law with his own new theory of natural law. His natural law and natural rights first published in 1980 provides an important contemporary restatement on natural law. John Finnis Books is a remarkable book. Finnis offer a robust exposition and defense of natural law, but it differs significantly from the way in which the natural law is often understood today. The skeptic thinking of modern thinker against an absolute idea of justice and their established belief in the progress of mankind resulted in the rejection of older notion of natural law as a law which is immutable, eternal and universal. In its modern incarnation, natural law become an evolutionary idea and thus as a directive force in development of positive law. As a consequence, modern natural law theories could be seen as part of never ending search for idea of justice. Finnish analysis start with the defense of natural law or naturalist jurisprudence and analyzing the natural law element in positive law and its relationship with natural law theories. He strongly argued that the positivist negation of natural law is a baseless on the ground that what positivists see as realities to be avoid are now attested by natural law and what they portray as illusion to be insisted are not a piece of natural law. Finnish new natural law theory is a type of moral theory. A moral theory of natural law states that all human beings have a capacity to understand basic obligation. It presupposes the ability of everyone to understand the basic aspect of morality regardless of their race, religion, creed, color or culture. Another important assumption of this moral theory relates to applicability of basic requirement of morality to everyone, no matter what their race, creed or color culture is. According to Finnish natural law is the set of principle of practical reasonableness. In ordering human life and human community. It is the requirement of practical reasonableness which in combination with the principle of basic goods represents the structure of natural law analysis. Finnish grounds the moral rational strength on the law of purposive contribution to the continuance and fulfillment of a complete community. The test of practical reasonableness in the combination with the basic goods are designed to formulate a set of moral standards which have to apply in the same sense to everyone. On this understanding, a natural law theory seeks to help all people understand what they morally ought or ought not to do. Natural law theory advanced by Professor Fennes makes certain assumption about what all human beings need to live their lives well. 
what nature natural law theory does is that it offers a way of thinking or decision making process about how to go about living one's own life finis has given a two main proposition that is basic goods and practicable reasonable niche by these two things he want to communicate that how a human being can achieve wellness in this community his main idea about this basic goods and reasonable probableness is that man should achieve their maximum wellness at his own existence time or during in, in that particular society finis propounded seven basic goods for human beings these are first life second knowledge third play or game fourth aesthetic experience fifth sociability or friendship seventh practical reasonableness and religion finis thinks that these seven goods are universal they apply to all humans at all time to flourish a human being we need all these seven basic goods now i am going to interpret all these seven basic goods one by one first life what is the meaning of life by finis finis explain life that it is the drive for self preservation it includes very and every aspect of life which puts a human being in a good shape for self determination it includes bodily health freedom from pain also transmission of life by procreation second knowledge knowledge means it is desirable for its own sake it is a good to be a well informed instead of ignorant play play means recreation enjoyment fun engaging in a performance for no other reason than the performance itself aesthetic experience an appreciation of beauty in art or nature sociability or friendship it is peace and harmony amongst men at its minimum in its strongest form it is the flowering of full friendship acting in the interest of one's friends or for the sake of a friend practical reasonableness using one's intelligence to solve problem for deciding what to do how to live and shaping one's character religion our concern about an order of things that transcends our individual interest not necessarily a religion per se now second to last one that is the practical reasonableness finish explain more about this he says that there are nine basic requirement of practical reasonableness first is the goods of practical reasonableness we say that structure the pursuit of good generally it shapes our participation in other goods it help us to choose what to do what projects to commit or our time to second practical reasonableness is a coherent plan of life third is no arbitrary preference over values fourth is no arbitrary preference amongst person fifth is equilibrium between detachment and commitment sixth is the relevance of consequence actions should be reasonably efficient seventh is respect for every basic value in every act eighth is the requirement of common good one should act to advance the interest of the community and last and ninth is following one's conscience we should not go against our inner conscience now the this seven basic goods and nine requirement of practical reasonableness finish idea of the universal and immutable principle of natural law his theory says that accords with the basic idea of natural law put forward by aquinas he says that these seven basic goods are not derived from anything they are all self evident 
understood by all and they are all equally fundamental. They are incommensurable meaning thereby no one can measure one against other. Their supposed incommensurability leads Finnish to state that people should pursue all the goods and should not ignore any of them. This however does not preclude an individual to give emphasis on one good over other, but none of these goods should be excluded. According to Finnish, all seven basic human goods are equally fundamental because none can be analytically reduced to being merely an aspect of other or being merely instrumental in pursuit of any other. It is because of their nature and intrinsic value that they are capable of being referred as the most important and different point in time. He said that one's reason for choosing are reason that properly relates to one temperament, upbringing, capacities and opportunities, not to differences of rank of intrinsic value between these basic goods. These basic goods are not morally good or morally values, but objective goods. The things that makes the life worthwhile qualities which render activities and form of life desirable. On this understanding, they may be understood as a set of condition which enable the member of a community or society to attain for themselves reasonable objectives and make people personal plan and projects of a life a possibility. This is about seven basic goods. Out of these seven basic goods, Finnish has described practicable reasonableness to the maximum extent. And this practical reasonableness govern to balance all these seven basic goods. So, practical reasonableness occupy the highest place in Finnish theory, as it is not only one of the basic form of human flourishing, a basic human good, but also shapes one participation in other basic goods and serve as engine for how we assess or pursue the other basic human goods. According to Finnis, first requirement of practical reasonableness is to formulate a rational plan of life. Finnis does not want that we must have the perfect life with the perfect balance to participate in all basic goods. In other words, he does not want each of us to be the ideal college parties applicant with all the right extracurricular activities. All that first requirement of practical reasonableness insist upon is that we should remain open to value of all the basic good regardless of what the focus of our national plan of life is. Second requirement for practical reasonableness is coherent plan of life. One must choose a coherent plan of life on the basis of one's capacities, circumstances and even one test. But it would be unreasonable if it either gives too much value to instrumental goods like wealth, opportunity, reputation or pleasure or is based on some devaluation of basic human goods. Finnish explained the criteria of capacities, circumstances and test with the help of example of a scholar who may have little test for friendship and may be completely committed to their search of knowledge. According to Finnish, it would be unreasonable for him to deny that friendship is a good in itself. Having no test for friendship is one thing, but it is another thing and stupid or arbitrary to think or speak or act as if this were not a real form of good. Third requirement is no arbitrary preference amongst values. By assigning an equal value to each basic goods, Phoenix makes it objectively unreasonable to neglect any basic goods. For example, it is unreasonable for a scholar who is single-mindedly focused on his commitment to knowledge 
to objectively deny that friendship is goods in itself while finnish acknowledges that it may not be possible to embrace some of basic goods as wholesomely as others one should leave themselves open to all fourth requirement is no arbitrary preference amongst person in accordance with the golden rule of morality articulated in abrahamic religious tradition this principle centers on empathy in short do to others as you would have them to do you do to you the basic goods are capable of being pursued and enjoyed by any human being and they are equally good when enjoyed by other persons as when enjoyed by myself my well being is the first claim on my interest and my concern myself with realization of objective goods but at the same time must not discount another's interest other pursuits which is coming on the common good thus the essence of the third requirement is that one should not have obsessive concern with another survival knowledge creativity or pursuit of any of other basic goods drawing on the kantian rule of universality this principle declares that one should treat people always as ends in themselves yet the principle remain a pungent critic of selfishness hypocrisy and double standard fifth requirement is equilibrium between detachment and commitment the corresponding principle of detachment and commitment will be discussed together given in their mutual subject matter detachment prohibit fatalism or obsession with specific projects ensuring life is not drained of meaning of if one's objective eludes them commitment prescribes that one engages in projects and pursue them beyond hardship one should expand their horizon in seeking out creative ways to pursue their enterprises less we need lessly waste opportunity for fulfillment to do so is to live on level of practical principle or what aquinas cherished as volunta simplex turning to sixth requirement it relates to limited relevance of consequences efficiency within reason here finnis is saying that one should be efficient in his action in trying to catch these basic goods this principle speaks to the need of, for efficiency in pursuit of definite goals finnis rejects utility utilitarianism reasoning as senseless or unworkable because the basic form of human goods are incommensurable and thus any human thus any calculus that tries to calculate them is irrational not with standing its limitation the so called market driven cost benefit analysis can be implemented but its conclusion are not determinative ultimately the efficiency of a given action will not justify a departure from kant's categorical imperative the rule that is informed by deontological consideration the seventh requirement of practical reasonableness is that of respect for every basic value in every act the do no evil that good may come principle declares that one should not act in a way that of itself damage a basic good because the basic goods are open ended this is a guiding idea rather than a realizable ideal finnis holds that in every act one must respect all basic goods 
the only reason for doing an act contrary to this rule is that good consequences of the act outweigh the damage done through the act itself to illustrate the point in a situation in which sacrificing the life of a person is not justified so is the case with deliberate walking away from family obligations as it directly damages the basic good of sociality or friendship to the contrary if a scholar works on a sunday to meet an important deadline he is not guilty of a violation of seventh requirement damage caused to the family life which is the basic good of sociability is not the result of direct decision to harm his family there is no doubt that it indirectly damages the basic good of sociality but it is also enhances the good of knowledge the eighth requirement of practical reasonableness is that of favoring the common good of one's communities according to finnes the common good is not the utilitarian's greatest net good but rather it is the ensemble of condition which would enable each to pursue his own objective this includes the good of living in a community where the dignity and rights of all are honored in the exercise of public authority finnis posits that the common goods is the source of most of occur concrete moral responsibilities obligation and duties it assumes that participating in the common good is to realize what would enhance the participation of in goods of both one's neighbor and of himself the next and the final requirement is the one should not do what one judges or think or feel all in all should not be done this principle endeavors to achieve a harmony between judgment and choice and flows from the fact that practicable reasonableness is not simply a mechanism for producing correct judgment but an aspect of personal full being to be respected in every act this principle acknowledges that even following the consequence as we are morally bound to do we can go wrong conscientious judgment may never the less be erroneous hence acting in accordance with the conscience renders an action conscionable but not necessarily moral thus principle respects the dignity of the mistaken conscience while finnis has successfully constructed a theory of natural law which does not suffer from the so called naturalistic fallacy of driving out from is it has been criticized by more traditional thomistic philosopher who insists that the dictates of the natural law ought to be derived from the metaphysical study of human values finnis has tried to give a new approach through this seven basic good and practicable reasonableness for natural law finnis has developed his own theory of natural law out of an account of the basic goods and this nine pr that is practicable reasonableness which he claims to be the self evident in order to make this theory immune from the charge of the naturalistic fallacy and not from a metaphysical account of human nature being it is a self evidence then there is no requirement to get the support from metaphysical argument or other things there are certain basic criticism of finnes theory certain very important criticism is that genuine ethical conclusion of the kind finnes claims in his theory to have reached could only be secured by 
determining what is truly good for human being on the basis of metaphysical account of human nature. That means when you are going to judge on the basis of that goods and for judging that goods there must be some element which is coming through metaphysical argument. We have seen in the finesse claim that his list of basic good to be exhaustive. He has only limited seven goods, but skeptics takes an issue with finish on this count and argues that there could be essential feature of human flourishing other than these listed seven goods. And further basic goods finding a place in his list are not all independent and irreducible. Third criticism is that it is plausible to argue that play is only an instrumental good in so far as it serves either aesthetic experience or sociability. Again, a skeptic may argue that life is only a good if an individual has most of the typical facilities. In a similar vein, one might also claim that religion is not a good because even asking question about the meaning of life is of no value. Other points in Finnish theory is first that he said that unjust law are not simply nullities because they go against common good. They lose their direct moral authority to bind and in so other words an unjust law is still a law. He says that in some situation we must obey an unjust law and even comply with unjust law to further a common good. So an unjust law might sometime have to be complied with. It will depend on circumstances. We cannot automatically assume that an unjust law is no law at all and need to be obeyed. In other words, he argues that a legal system is there to further the common good. Therefore, any disobedient act that tends to weaken the legal system as a whole may be unjustified. Surprisingly, he thinks that sometime a law may have to obey it even if it seems immoral because disobeying it might weaken the whole system. He uses some interesting example to show the natural law is accepted even by positivist and he gives the one of the best example by citing Nuremberg trial. He said that Nazi war criminal were prosecuted before crime, tri um, crime tribunal such as crime against humanity which were not a crime at that time that when those crimes were committed. This, he says, is an example of natural law at work. He says that the tribunal applied higher law that exists at all time in all places regardless of positive law. So, Finnish has described natural law theory with the help of these seven basic goods and nine reasonable, uh, practicable reasonableness to give a new idea of natural law which says that by these required elements a man can achieve fulfillment in their life and community. This is all about Finnish natural law theory. Summary of this theory is in only in the two part that Finnish has tried to give or tried to achieve the well-being of a person with the help of seven basic good and reason, uh, nine practical reasonableness. These seven basic goods are life, knowledge, play, aesthetic experience, sociability, practical reasonableness, religion. And nine practical reasonableness are first 
the good of practical reasonableness, current plan of life, no arbitrary preference amongst values, no arbitrary preference amongst person, equilibrium between detachment and commitment, the relevance of consequences, actions should be reasonably efficient, respect for every basic value in every act, the requirement of common good, one should act to advance the interest for the community and following one conscience which should not go against our inner conscience. It is all about Finnish natural law theory. Thank you.